2021 NASCAR schedule is here and there is a lot to look at. So let's talk about it. <clears throat> 2021 schedule is out. There's a lot of things that are different in here and there's a lot of things that aren't so different and kind of feel familiar. So let's, uh, let's kind of go through it. So first off, we have the Daytona 500. I don't think anyone's very surprised by that. Immediately, that's gonna be followed by a race in Homestead, Miami. So that kind of makes sense to me. I think you uh, have the opportunity to retain some people from the Daytona 500 that can kind of drive down to Miami, spend a few days down there, vacation, go to the Homestead race, and then maybe fly home or do whatever they're gonna do. Um, makes sense also because it's gonna be a little bit cooler in Miami, uh, be a little bit more comfortable. Then we have our West Coast Swing, uh, pretty much intact as it was. Uh, that's great. We're going to Auto Club, then Las Vegas, then Phoenix. That's fantastic. I support that. Then immediately after the West Coast Swing, we're going to be going to Atlanta Motor Speedway, which is cool. Um, the first of two races there. So Atlanta's going to get two dates. Um, I think as far as mile and a half racetracks to have two dates, I think Atlanta is one of the ones that you want to have that at. It's a good racetrack. It's got an old worn out surface. Um, I am kind of of the opinion that they should reconfigure it to the old 90s Atlanta, but yeah, we'll have that. After Atlanta, we're gonna be going and racing Bristol Motor Speedway on dirt, which is going to be very interesting. I'm kind of skeptical about having cup cars race on the dirt. Uh, the trucks have always felt a little clunky to me on dirt at Eldora, but it has potential to be a very interesting event it can go either way, and I think the best thing to do in this scenario is just to be a little open-minded and just kind of see what happens. You know, it, there's a good chance that this will probably be a one-off kind of event. I don't know that we'll be doing this every year. I think they're kind of trying it out, especially with the next-gen car. I don't know how well the next-gen car is going to be able to adapt to dirt. There's probably a good chance we might see uh, a new winner that we've never seen win a Cup Series race during that weekend. Uh, teams that probably have never won Cup Series races, have a real shot at running well that weekend because that is a completely different animal and no one has any data to go off of. It's gonna be different, so that'll be cool. After Bristol, there's an Easter holiday weekend. Um, and then the spring kind of looks pretty normal up until you get to Darlington on May 9th. So I think it's a good move to have uh, two Darlington races. I think uh, that's a track that's very unique and it's generally a fan favorite. They're also gonna be running the low downforce, high horsepower package, so uh, that's good to see. I'm a fan of that. Uh, it's good to see that NASCAR is willing to run that at places more than just short tracks. So that's encouraging. That's something I think people should be giving a good thumbs up to NASCAR for. That's good to see. Uh, then we're going to Dover, then Circuit of the Americas. I've done a video on Circuit of the Americas. I think that's gonna be a really good uh, racetrack and one to keep your eye on next year. Um, that's out of the road courses next year, personally, I am probably the most excited for that one. Uh, it's a, it's a cool track. Then after that, we have the Coke 600 at Charlotte. That's, uh, not too surprising. That's not shaking up too much. Uh, then June 6th, we're going to Sonoma. Love Sonoma. It's a great racetrack. I was a little worried we were going to lose that one. Um, that I saw a couple of little rumors floating around that we were going to lose that one. It was going to go to, uh, the Nashville, uh, street course, which which also would be cool, but I like Sonoma a lot. And I think fans would be really sad if we didn't have Sonoma. After Sonoma, we're going to Texas Motor Speedway for the All-Star Race. Uh, yeah, Texas is an okay, it's fine. Uh, it's not really gonna be that different than us having our All-Star Race at Charlotte, in my opinion, from a uh, event standpoint. I think we're missing out on a few things, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I think it's worth it to have the Circuit of the Americas race personally. I think that's a that's a good thing. So I can't complain too much about that. After that, on June 20th, we have Nashville Super Speedway. Again, I think the fairgrounds is the place to be in Nashville. But I, I'm interested to see what the Super Speedway race is. They're gonna be running the uh, low downforce package there too. So that I can't complain too much that they're doing that. That's a good thing to at least see. Um, that they're at least trying to make that event as good as it can be. Following week, we have a Pocono doubleheader. Uh, that is what it is. I think Pocono's not my favorite track. I don't think it's a lot of people's favorite track, but 
It's been a staple for a while. It's different, it's unique. It's unlike any other track on the schedule. So we have that. After the Pocono doubleheader, we have Road America, which I think will be cool. Um, that's a really long road course. It's very unique. Uh, the Xfinity race there this past year was awesome. I really enjoyed watching that race. So, so I think that race is gonna be fun to look forward to. After Road America, it looks like we're going to Atlanta for its second race. Um, this looks like it might be a day race also, which is going to be really hot. Um, July 11th, it's a Sunday, so I was kind of hoping that would be a night race just for the sake of it being in the summer in Atlanta. That's going to be very uncomfortable, but we'll see. The two weeks after Atlanta, we're going to New Hampshire and Watkins Glen. Then August 15th, we're doing the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course. So. I don't think that's too much of a surprise. Xfinity Series ran this road course this year and it was very successful in my opinion. I think people really enjoyed it. And the, the Indianapolis Oval just hasn't produced racing for stock cars like I think people would like to see. Um, so I think it's a good move to, to change it up a little bit. I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna complain about that at all. After the Indianapolis road course, we're going to Michigan for its only Cup Series date next year. Then our uh, regular season finale will be at Daytona again, which I think was very well received. I think that's a good call. And then pretty much the playoffs are basically the same. Our playoff opener will be the Southern 500 at Darlington. Always a great race. Uh, that's a very that's a fan favorite weekend with all the throwback paint schemes and such. And then uh, Richmond, Bristol, Las Vegas, Talladega, Charlotte Roval, Texas, Kansas, Martinsville, and then Phoenix for the championship race. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. As you can see, they're really doubling down on the road courses. And I think you're seeing that, uh, especially because one, people have been asking for more road courses, but it's hard to give a date to a lot of short tracks in the country right now because the infrastructure is just not there to take on cup weekends right now. But it's really easy to go to like Circuit of the Americas and put a race there because obviously they have the infrastructure for it. So. That makes sense. And one thing to consider here is I don't think NASCAR is going to feel like they are locked into this kind of format or schedule for the future. I think we'll see more short tracks coming. I think there's a few things that they can consider and look at doing uh, in the future. You know, like they're doing all this stuff with Auto Club or you have places like North Wilkesboro that have been abandoned or Rockingham. So if NASCAR wanted to give one of those places a date, they have to invest in those places. They have to invest in the infrastructure and the um, facilities. I would have liked to see Iowa get a date. I think Iowa is a great racetrack. But we'll have to kind of see after this year. I don't think NASCAR is going to feel bad about taking a race away from one of these tracks in 2022. I think they were pretty cutthroat with this. I mean, getting rid of Chicagoland and Kentucky, that's pretty intense. I mean, they they definitely were not uh, shying away from, from doing that. So tell me what you think in the comments. What would you like to have seen differently? What do you like about the schedule? What, what excites you? What are you looking forward to? What races are you going to go to? I think I'm going to be going to quite a few of these. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you could give me a like and a subscribe, that would be fantastic. And I would appreciate that greatly. This is Tight End Loose Off. My name's Tyler, and I'll see you next time.